We live in an era of non-communicable diseases, and that includes heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and cancer. Cancer being the main threat. And to solve those, we need medicines. Although precision-targeted biologic medicines can transform outcomes, the cost of providing those specialist medicines is taking up a greater share of healthcare funding. In cancer medicine, with more patients to treat, more who can benefit from medicines, costs have doubled in a decade. And that cuts the funds for the other things we need, such as doctors and nurses, clinics and scanners. We must confront a stark reality. The result is that cancer care has become unaffordable for most patients, many payers and nearly all healthcare systems or governments. As the World Health Organization says, this is a real and immediate threat to patients worldwide. Imagine there's a medicine that could save your life, but it's priced out of reach and therefore not available to you. Well, that's where biosimilars come in. They make breakthrough medicines affordable and thereby accessible. Biosimilars are rigorously tested versions of existing biologic medicines. It's no surprise to hear that it's oncologists that have been the leading supporters of biosimilars. Sandoz is the global leader in generic and biosimilar medicines with a strategy driven by its purpose, pioneering access for patients. After developing the world's first biosimilar in 2006, we continue to lead through innovation, scale, and impact. This expertise translates directly into how we develop and validate each biosimilar. After a thorough characterization and understanding of the reference biologic, the next stage involves confirming biosimilarity using the following three steps. Structural characterization of the reference biologic and the future biosimilar, functional characterization of the reference biologic and the future biosimilar, and clinical study analysis. Structural characterization is a cornerstone of biosimilar development. It ensures that the proposed biosimilar matches the reference biologic. Sanders analytical characterization team based in Holzkirchen, Germany, develops and uses state-of-the-art, highly sophisticated and sensitive analytical techniques to analyze the reference biologic. The thorough structural analysis of the reference biologic provides guidance for the iterative biosimilar development. This includes, for example, the primary amino acid sequence, the post-translation and modifications, and the protein folding pattern. Throughout this exercise, we obtain information about the extent to which the reference biologic varies, and we can define the features that determine its clinical efficacy and safety. Throughout the entire biosimilar life cycle, from initial reference biologic analysis to post-approval support, the analytical characterization team remains actively involved, ensuring that every biosimilar developed at Sanders meets the highest standard of quality and similarity. My name is Vera Koppenburg, and I'm heading the early translational sciences team here at Sanders. Small alterations in structural elements like the glycan profile of the biological molecule can translate into large differences in the functional activity, for example, the ability of the molecule to kill cancer cells. Therefore, in biosimilar development, the reference biologic and the proposed biosimilar are extensively characterized by various functional assays at all stages of the molecule's life cycle in order to determine and to show that the molecule is doing what it's supposed to do from a functional or biological perspective. Functional assay development starts with the analysis of various batches of the reference biologic that are commercially available to understand the variability within the reference biologic and to set target ranges for all functionalities of the molecule. As soon as biosimilar batches are available, they are analyzed together with the reference biologic with respect to functional properties. Larger differences in functional activity are not acceptable and require fine-tuning of the manufacturing process. Functional characterization goes hand in hand with structural characterization and cannot be handled in isolation. This means that the close connection between the departments or disciplines is essential for the success of our biosimilar development. 
With the proximity of the departments here on the Sandos campus in Holzkirchen, Germany, this essential prerequisite is realized. Biosimilars, as you've seen, depend on high precision analytics. But a further safety step is to confirm biosimilarity with a head-to-head -head safety and efficacy trial. My name is Gregor Schaff, and I'm leading the clinical bioanalytics team here at Sando in global clinical development. Comparative clinical studies are the final step in biosimilar development. And the purpose of those clinical studies is to confirm clinical equivalence of the proposed biosimilar to its reference medicine based on predefined margins, using study populations and endpoints which are sensitive to detect differences. Such comparative clinical studies contain detailed analysis of pharmacokinetics of the medicines to compare how the drugs behave in the body, as well as evaluation of efficacy, immunogenicity and safety. Bioanalytics plays a crucial role in the evaluation of pharmacokinetics and immunogenicity in biosimilar clinical trials. The clinical bioanalytics team is based here in Holzkirchen in close proximity to our analytical laboratories and the clinical team and develops and validates state-of-the-art clinical methods. These are used in our ISO-accredited laboratory to analyze clinical study samples with the highest precision and sensitivity. The results of our bioanalytical measurements are finally used to evaluate the comparative clinical studies and are the basis to confirm that the bisimilar and its reference medicine are clinically the same. Biosimilars deliver advantages to every health system. The economics are simple, as we saw in the UK. The approval of biosimilars in your country or region mean that those biologics become less expensive. For low- and middle-income regions, or underfunded healthcare systems where reimbursement was challenging, the arrival of biosimilars can be the first chance to access these precision biologic medicines. In well-resourced countries with already high use, the money saved can be reinvested into next-generation innovative medicines, with examples such as the UK Cancer Drugs Fund, paid for by the savings made from just 10 biosimilar and generic medicines. And that explains why countries like the UK France and Norway are leading the shift to biosimilars through incentives and supportive policies. Texas Oncology Clinic identified three high-cost drugs where biosimilars could give savings. And four million US dollars a month could be reinvested into better and more affordable care. What happens if many clinics cooperate in a biosimilar program? Here's the example of Manchester in the UK, where all the clinics in the city, using adalimumab, agreed to switch to a biosimilar version, saving 433 million US dollars in the first year alone. In conclusion, every health system can benefit from biosimilars, and patients are the real winners.